Welcome to uh, my last beginner breakdown of the year. I'm your host, uh, Mike Hummer, and I'm in a lot of trouble. I'm on uh, double secret probation here, so, so they finally said, enough goofing off. I have to actually teach today, like something good. So we're going to be teaching uh, king and pawn end games, okay? So let's buckle down and really try to learn something today. All right, this was played from uh, the uh, holiday chess tournament played last week. Second place, shocker, was uh, Wilson Gao. So he's playing the white pieces. And let's see how he does in the final round. All right, he starts out with the king's pawn. Black counters with uh, knight c6. So, so you know, if they don't attack your e-pawn, you can just go ahead and play uh, d4, OK? And so now d5, pass it up, e6. So. So black had a chance to play bishop f5 and rescue that bishop from, uh, from impending doom, but he played e6 and he really just boxed it in. All right, so white plays f4, knight out, gets his knight out, bishop out, bishop to d3. So now white has uh, complete control of this. So, so that white bishop is kind of powerful. He's aiming at h7, and if black ever gets castled, you know, he'll have a threat over there. So, so what do you think black plays the counter bishop to d3? How can we attack the bishop on d3? Knight to b4. Knight to b4, excellent. Yeah, yep, so now the knight attacks the bishop. He attacks the knight. Black's like, I wasn't bluffing, Wilson. I'm taking your guy with check. And uh, so queen takes. So black gets castled. White, white does as well. And now black plays c5. So black's position isn't looking all that bad here. He might actually have an advantage here. All right, so uh, takes it. Or no, he doesn't take it. He plays. Well, let's see what he does. All right, yeah, he does take it. Bishop takes c5 check. Bishop blocks. And uh, so now he gets the queen out. So queen and bishop are coming down on this bishop. So he's got he's to either protect the bishop or he can just take. So now queen takes check, and the king goes to the corner. Okay? So black tries to make the best... Uh, situation out of his uh, light squared bishop that's been entombed voluntarily. So he's going to try to get, get it going. So all right, brings the knight up. Rook to c8. So now he's got two guys coming down here. So, so a move that white probably doesn't want to play here is b3 or b4 because, you know, he would lose the knight. So got to think about that. So let's see what he actually does do. He plays knight to d4 and not a6. So rook f3. So now, you know, he might be thinking about playing rook to g3, maybe even rook to h3. So he's got ideas of having him be part of the uh, kingside attack here. So black retreats with queen to e7, rook to g3. So now the rook is on the same line as the king. Let's see if uh, he can do anything with that. So rook to c4. And now white plays the move that I do not recommend, b3. OK, so now black rooks is under attack here. But he's got a trick, possibly. What do you think black trick would be in this position? Rook takes knight, queen takes, and then what's the big follow-up? Knight to f5. Yeah, and then the queen would retreat, knight check. We probably don't want double pawn, so we take. And now black can play like queen to c5, followed by rook to c8. Even though he's not up any material, it's just he's got such a much better position. And, and white cannot really generate any kind of kingside attack. h4, h5 would just easily be countered with h6. So 
That's, that's what he really should have played. Instead, he just retreats the c7. So, so now white decides, I'm going to get my uh, kingside attack on. And he plays the dreaded move f6. So he takes, bishop takes, knight takes, queen takes. And now pawn takes f6, queen takes f6. And, uh, and so now white can play queen takes d5 check, but which would be fine, possibly, if he, if he gets the right follow-up. Because what, like if he plays queen takes check here, king here, and then isn't really paying attention, he's like, oh no, my knight's under attack, maybe I could just, you know, attack his queen here. What does black play to uh, win the game? Queen takes, queen takes rook. Oh, queen takes rook. Yeah, yeah, nice, <laughs> nice. Queen takes rook. Okay. Uh, what if what if he's like, oh, I'll just I'll just uh, you know, I'll just protect the uh, the guy. Queen f1. Queen f1. Check. Rook takes. Rook takes mate. He could obviously probably go. Well. If he goes back to d3, though, this gets kind of confusing, too, because he can just come down and play rook takes. And then after queen takes, it's the same thing, checkmate. So white's got to be really careful here. So Wilson decides, I'm going to be really careful. I'm going to play rook to f3 and attack the queen. OK? And so queen goes back. So rook takes f8, check. Queen takes f8. And now queen takes check. And king. So notice in this position that the back row checkmate is in play for both kings. It's very important to, uh, to you know, keep that in mind. Because as we'll see, some of uh, the tricks that come up in this game don't work because of the back row checkmate is in play, as we'll see later. All right, so queen protects the knight. Rook over. Okay, so. He is not threatening back row checkmate in this instance, because rook, or whatever, if I play a4, uh, rook, rook takes, queen takes, queen back, OK? All right, so, all right, so he's like, all right, well, I don't even want to even pretend about the back row checkmate, so I'm going to play king to g1. Rook attacks the queen, queen retreats. Queen gives a big check. And guess what? Uh-oh, back row checkmate is in play now. So now black is really excited here. He goes knight to g4. Uh, we, we should really take a good hard look at this position, because black is threatening a whole heck of a lot here, right? He's, namely, knight check, right? OK, what's the only move we can play to uh, to thwart you know, him from, uh, from black from winning here. There's only one move. Uh, every other move loses. Queen to d8, you just lost the game, unfortunately. All right, so what move do you want to play? Play any one, you're going to lose. How about, oh, I want to save my queen. Good luck. <laughs> uh, uh, All right, queen to d2. Check. No. Oh, no. Okay. And then, have you guys ever seen the smothered yeah, mate? Yeah, right oh, but it's not oh, smothered yeah. mate. Oh, it's not. So you got so lucky. You got so lucky. <laughs> All right, so let's not do the smothered mate. Let's play. Let's play. Uh, all right, let's just win your queen, okay? And just, this party's over, okay? Party's over. All right. All right, so, all right. So, all right, so, so that doesn't work, not because of the smother mate, but because uh, knight discovered check loses the queen. You got lucky. If we try h3, bad news. You lose your queen just outright. Only one move works here. Just so everybody saw that at home after queen check, 
rook, uh, queen to d2. We're going to play check. And then it's a discovered check, OK? And the queen has no good way to block it, and you'll win, OK? Because you're, you're in check. All right, so here it is. Here's the knight to e2. Oh, I'll just check and uh, check and uh, you're not looking very good. So luckily Wilson is like, I'm not going to resign. I'm going to find the best move. I don't care if I have to sit here all day. I'm going to figure it out. Do you have any other guesses? How can we stop knight f2 check without losing material? And it only works because, uh, notice, black has the back row checkmate. Right, knight to e4. Rook takes e4, fails miserably to check mate. OK? So, so knight e4 is the move. So. Black wishes he could play rook takes knight and, and be like, I'm the best at tactics. But it doesn't work because of the, the back row checkmate. So he plays queen to f8. Now he's, got, now he's got ideas of rook takes knight again. Do we have any ideas what we can do now? Once again. There's probably only one move that to save everything. Because if we don't play anything, rook takes knight is coming. And obviously, if we move the knight anywhere, it's a disaster for us because of uh, knight to f2 check. How about king over to g1? So king to g1. Excellent. Queen to so oh, queen c5. Oh, we would take the knight. Queen to c5 is the follow-up move to here. Now queen to c5. As like darn, darn, darn. <laughs> so queen to f8. Remember, we don't want to resign. So we got to find the one and only move here. I know it's tough. When, when you're in a, in a position like this, maybe we just got to make a threat of our own. Because his, his threat is obviously rook takes knight, followed by the check, right? What would we love to do if after he takes the knight? Obviously, we don't want to take his rook. Maybe we can make a threat so we can take something else of his. So what's the only other thing we can really threaten in this position of blacks? Anybody got any guesses? Because this threat is rook takes knight. So we're down a knight. So what do you think we want to attack of blacks? So he's threatening to take our knight. So what should we threaten to take of his? Maybe his knight. Right. Right. So when he takes, we're like, we ain't taking your rook, buddy. We're going to take your knight. And we're going to hope that it, it, uh, we hold on for dear life here. So he attacks the queen, throws in a check. King moves, throws in another check. Rook blocks. And uh, so now queen, queen up. So stops the back row checkmate. So now he plays queen f1, threatening, of course, rook to f8, leading the checkmate. So black plays king to g8, attacks the rook. Rook moves, threatening a big threat here, rook to e1. So he's like, I'm not having any of that, king to g2. And now black's like, I'm going to end all the back row checkmate scenarios and just play h6. So this game 
should probably be a draw. They each have four pawns and a queen and rook, and it doesn't look like any players, anybody really has a chance for a checkmate now that uh, you know all the uh, all the back row checkmates are off the table. So pins the rook. He gets out of the pin. Gives him a check. King back. Queen retreats. Rook attacks the queen. Queen gives a check. King up. Rook attacks the queen. So, so let me ask you, what is the queen doing in this position? What is she protecting? She's protecting a couple things. She's protecting the pawn, the pawn, and the rook. Okay? So all he has to do is play queen to d7, and he's protecting everything. Right. OK, so unfortunately, plays queen to f6, unguarding the pawn, so Wilson's going for it. Why not? Why not? So now rook up, queen to f3. So queen takes, king takes. So now we're in an end game. Uh, Wilson should win this. He's doing great because he's got this rook making a big wall that the king can never penetrate, right? He can't, he can't ever get, get there. So all he has to do is run the c-pawn to victory. So king up, rook over. Rook threatens to, to take the rook. So he plays rook to there, protecting the uh, pawn. King over. So now black needs to seize the day and, and get, get at least a, a little closer if he can. So that really wasn't a good, a good little sequence for Wilson, but he still got, uh, got him pinned off of this E file. So he's stuck on the king side. So now, yeah, just rush the pawn up there. Check. I mean, all these checks, you know, don't really do much for, for Wilson, but that's okay. So rook check. King back so he can't get checked anymore. G5, G4. Okay. So now king back. So now white can continue advancing his uh, pawn if he wants. So, so Wilson shouldn't have had to be asked, you know, to, to move the C pawn. But he was, so he plays it. So king, king up, attacks the rook. So he needs to stay on the D file. So he just retreats all the way back to d1. All right, so king up, king f3, check. Now, if black wants to try and win this game, he really needs to play rook to f4 here, try to get, uh, try to do something here. Because if then if white would uh, play rook to g1 to protect it, guess what? We can get over and get our king, you know, Black in the pawns, which would be ideal. And if if Wilson Smarty plays, well, if he plays there, then maybe we trick him and it's like, okay, I got your pass pawn now. So rook to f4 was the best move to, to try here. Obviously, I guess uh, Wilson would play here and fork the pawns. But, you know, at least I have my own pass pawn and you have something to worry about. You got to have an active rook. When he plays rook to c6 here, it's just not going to just not going to do it. So now Wilson's like, "All right, I'm going to trade." And you know, if he moves the rook, it's not going to be a good sequence for him. So he's going to be like, uh, playing a kid, it's very easy to mess up these king and pawn endgames, so why not? I'm going to do it. So now, like in the opening, you know, I always stress, you know, make your moves count. Don't be moving around the same piece all the time. Don't be blocking in your pieces. Get castled. Time is very important. Just like in the end games, time is precious. If you make one little move that, you know, kind of waste time, that could be the difference between winning, losing, and drawing, as we'll see here. So let's see how precise Wilson ends up playing this 
to win. Remember, we don't want to waste time. We want to have a very active king, just like in the opening. We want to have active pieces. OK, so let's check this out. So king up, excellent, OK? Because where is he going? He's going to go over here. So we don't want to waste time like, oh, I got the opposition, or, or, or anything like that. It's like, let's take the quickest route to the pawns. So he's like, OK, I've got the opposition. And this totally wastes time. Where does black need to be? On the, yeah, because let's say in your ideal world, you know, you get to protect these pawns. Let's just say they start playing silly, OK? OK, then guess what's going to happen? I'm going to play here, and then here, and, or, or whatever. And then I got a queen, right? So, so you just wasted precious time by playing that move, OK? Because you need to be over here. So don't waste time, OK? And this guy is actually rated high, or about 200 points higher than uh, Wilson. So Wilson's like, I'm not having any of that. We're not going to do an opposition dance, like three, four repetition. I'm going to go get a, if you want to guard these kingside pawns, I'm going to get a queenside uh, queen. So then, OK. So now he's like, OK, you convinced me. So now Wilson's like, OK, I've got to get rid of that pawn. So now he's got a pass pawn. So king up, king up, king takes. OK, so now if we're goofing around and just like, oh, you know what? There's no way he can stop us. I'm just going to play here, OK? Just for instance. Yeah, no, right, don't play that. Right, you want to take the most direct path possible. OK, how can black actually draw this game now? Because it's like, oh man, how can he do it? What trick does he have here? Yeah, push the pawn. Create your own pass pawn. Because um, if we take the pawn and then he takes the pawn, insufficient material draw. And then obviously, if he plays uh, pawn takes, guess what? It's going to be a pawn race, and we'll both get there on the same move. Draw. Assuming we don't play a massive blunder like this. It's like, give me a break, OK? Do not put your king and the queen on the same line you know, in a king and queen endgame, OK? All right, so, but luckily, Wilson's like, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to play king to g6. And obviously, moves like this don't work because we can just take it with the king. OK? And so the game plays out. Uh, That's it. That's it. And much to his chagrin, it's all over. OK? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and that's that. OK, what was made in 12. What was the rating of two players? Uh, Wilson is 1604. Uh, chagrin is about. 1864. All right. So now we'll see a game where, uh, against lower rated opponents, where we have, you know, a made in 13 or something, but we screw it up because we're not precise with our moves. All right. So, uh, so Black is the hero. He's actually a fan of Beginner Breakdown, which I always like to meet uh, fans and everything. And, it's cool. So, so let's see how uh, David Thomas does. All right, so he's playing a 1,300, and David is let, rated less than 1,000. But, you know, he's going to play to the bitter end and see what happens. So they start out with the Sicilian. And e5 I'm not really a fan of because, you know, you're creating a hole for, uh, for the knight. But OK, knight to f5. In this position, I would probably just take it, you know. But all right. So knight to c6, knight to e3. You talked about, you know, time is really important in the, uh, in the opening just as well as the end game. And it's like you're moving around this knight way too much. And he can't resist moving it one more time. So, so look at this. Well, castle, castle, bishop out. And now he's like, OK, I'll move it one more time. So look at this. 
we both got castled, and there were one, two, three, and we got four out. And we're and we got to move second. So so black is winning out of this opening because white is really wasting a lot of time with this knight. So he's like, I'm if you want to make another knight move, buddy, go for it. So he's like, all right, one more. So check and bishop takes. So so black has really improved his position uh, while white's been wasting time. All right, so bishop out. So b6, queen to d2, rook d8, rook d1. That's another reason why e5 isn't the best because, you know, this pawn is a backwards pawn now. It's a weakness. This d5 square you can come in at any time. But all right. So now knight to e5, knight to d5. All right, so knight takes the bishop with check. Queen takes, bishop takes, rook takes. So we did some trades and, you know, everything looks okay. So queen, queen move. So he's attacking the a pawn, he's attacking the e pawn. All right. So now he plays rook to d1. So he's got two guys coming down. There. So he takes the e pawn. And I guess the reason why he doesn't take now, which looks sensible, because after rook takes, rook takes. So remember, we always want to look for undefended pieces and pawns. That's how tactics arise. So what tactic do we have in this position? Queen of B4. Yep. Double attack. All right, so he's like, I'm going to attack your queen first. And he's like, okay, I'm just play queen to B4 anyway. But now he's got c3, attacks the queen and protects. So he plays queen to a4, attacking the pawn. I guess he doesn't play b3 here because he'll just play queen to c6 and protect his pawn. OK, so he's like, OK, I'm going to take your guy. I'm going to take your guy. Rook takes. Bishop takes. Rook to d2, double protect the pawn. Pushes the pawn. All right, so now he's got two men coming down on the bishop. The queen is attacking the bishop through an x-ray. So he moves the bishop. Rook attacks the bishop. Queen protects the bishop. Queen moves. All right, so now he continues with a4. So now he offers a queen trade. So black's like, well, I got one, two, three, four, five, six pawns. You only have five. Consolidating is good for me. All right, so, so if he knows consolidating is good for him, he really should play rook to d8 here. Can't believe he doesn't play rook to d8 here. All right, so he's like, I'm not going to get back row checkmated. Keep in mind, you will not have to worry about getting back row checkmated, right, if there's no rooks on the board. All right. So anyhow, he plays the move h6. And now, look, look how more active white's rook is than black's. All right, so rook to c8, king f2, king f8. This is good. They're both getting their kings involved in the game. You need your kings involved in the end game. It's paramount. And yeah, he's coming, coming toward it. And yeah, if you move the kings diagonally, as you notice, it, they go a lot quicker, right? They can get, get there a lot faster. All right, so it's like the express lane, the diagonals. All right, so rook up. Uh, B5 looks pretty natural right here, right? You're attacking my pawn. Protect it with the pawn. Instead, by playing check here, right? I mean, he gets the king to where he wants to be. B5 would have also kept the king out of C4. But all right. All right, so F5, F3. Now, in this position, I would go for the really big, uh, big move, G5 here, OK? Instead, he's kind of like in a hurry, too much in a hurry here, and plays F4. 
So pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop there, so now g5. So king to d3, what did he just do with king to d3? Put his bishop in a pin, right? So b5, c4. All right, so c4 is kind of a, you know, kind of attacking the pawn chain at the base, okay? Trying to, trying to get it, okay? So if he would play check, then this guy's undefended, okay? Trying to undermine it, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, trying to undermine his pawn chain. All right, so, so c4, so now he's just going to go for it. Bishop attacks the bishop, pawn takes check, king back, rook takes pawn. So now it's not looking good for uh, black here. Not looking good at all. He was doing really good, now not so good. He's only got three pawns compared to four. And two of white's pawns are passed. So when he takes and trades everything, this is a disaster, right? An absolute disaster. But you never give up a king and pawn endgames because as we saw, we have tricks, okay? So now king up, and so white's like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna gobble this pawn, this pawn, this pawn, and then my H pawn is gonna become a queen. His dad's all sitting there smiling like, you're the best, you're the best, we're gonna have a ice cream after the game. It's gonna be a great car ride home, but let's check it out. But in this position, white plays a devastating blunder here. After he, king takes pawn, he's like, no worries, I'm gonna go get your H pawn and life is good. So it probably just went from mate in 13 for white to about mate in 18 for black. So what's black's huge move here? G4. G4, right. So I'm going to get my own pass pawn, and there's nothing you can do about it. Now the dad isn't smiling so much. <laughs> he had to leave the tournament hall and probably leave the room and scream in his car, OK? So <laughs> there it is. So pawn takes. So let's go back, well, well, let's watch this game and then we'll see what, what white should have done to win the game. Well, actually, well, let's look at it right now. So king takes, so what move does white have to make to just seal the deal, okay? Because we obviously see that king to f6 is devastation because of the move g4. h3, excellent. So now, Maybe he could try this, but I don't think it's good. It's too slow. Let's take this pawn. And black skin can't stop them both. Yeah, it's over, right? It's over, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's over. Is that right? Okay. Resign, okay, okay. So, so we have to cut off his counterplay here, okay? So, so he thought he was doing everything great. King f6, but it just, it loses. I mean, he can try, and he, I mean, he does try, but to no avail. Check, loses a pawn, another check, check, bring the king over, pins the pawn, brings his king up. Obviously, if G, right, well, he's got mate no matter what. How does black mate him here? Checkmate. Yep. So that's it. So that's that's the game. And by the way, if you ever have a, let's just say it's not mate here. Let's say let's say he plays up here like this. 
A great way to play that is just put the queen right on the same queening file as that pawn, and then there's nothing he can ever do to get it. And then you can just end, end the game so nicely. Okay, but yeah, checkmate, and uh, David uh, came back with a big win there. He didn't give up, right? Even though he was down a pawn in a king and pawn endgame, you know, mistakes happen, right? Okay, so we've learned enough about king and pawn endgames. Uh, how about we end the year with a funny game, okay? <laughs> All right, this is why we really tune in. Okay, we got a game from one of the, the lower boards, okay? We got uh, a, new, uh, a new little prodigy coming up, Aaron Lynn, who scored the biggest upset of the day uh, against uh, Robert Beekman, okay? So Aaron's got the black pieces. Knight f3, knight c6. And, uh, you know, they're playing okay. White's, White's opening is kind of weird because, as you'll see, uh, you know, he got castle, which is good. H3, so he retreats his bishop. But as you see, he's got, he's got all the doors open, as they say, right? He's got this way to get out of his bishop, that way to get out of his bishop, this way to get out of his bishop, this way to get out of his bishop. It's good to just, just pick one and go with it. So queen to d7, attacking the pawn, so uh, king up. So now queen side castle. So Aaron, like a lot of kids, when you're playing kids, you should, you should expect them to be very, very aggressive. So, so they'll, they'll castle like on the opposite side of you and just, just try to beat you. So, so I like it. So it get, lets the pawns go. So Robert's like, I'm going to retreat my knight. So just keep pushing the pawns at him. So queen f3, so he's attacking our knight, so we gotta protect it. So bishop moves off the back row, but not really targeting too much. So now he's got all, look at how many people he's got in the fight now. He's got two rooks, a knight, a bishop, a queen. You know, he's threatening to get his knight up here. So Aaron's doing this good. He's uh. He's just waiting to strike here. And now with bishop c3, I mean, he's just tempting them to strike with g4. Obviously, if we took here, it would be a major blunder. Discovered check, and we win your queen. All right, so Robert sees it, and it moves his queen, okay? So he takes the pawn, bishop takes, and now he gets a big check in. King to g2, and now he's trying to break open the g file with the rook and the knight and the king on it. So white decides I gotta try to get my own counterplay going with b4, break open the b file. So he obliges. So rook attacks the bishop, bishop back. All right, so now he's gonna redirect his queen to try to get uh, an attack going. So, wait, wait, before you do that. Yes. No, okay, okay. Go ahead. That's fine. Pawn takes. Okay. So yeah, obviously yeah. we don't want to take here because what would uh, black play to devastate white? Knight to e6. Knight to e3 check. <laughs> yep. The the fork. Alright, so so he decides I'm gonna I'm just gonna make a run for it, okay? <laughs> Uh, good luck. This is this is really really dangerous. Uh, so so knight to h2 was played with check, <laughs> and then uh, so king e2. Instead he's he wants to remove the defender. Well, take the rook, but how should actually taking the rook is bad because after knight takes rook, well it's not bad. I mean black is still crushing. But how should obviously uh, white take back here? With the bishop, With the bishop right. Save the bishop. So yes. So in your, in your opinion, yeah, just play uh, bishop, bishop, bishop takes, uh, knight takes, and then we're just up a solid piece. OK, but Aaron's like. Rooks are better than knights, I'm going to take it. And unfortunately, he takes back with the king. 
So pawn takes, attacks the knight, knight to f3, rook takes, king moves, rook to g2, beautiful move, and now queen, or even though, even though rook to g1 might be better, rook to g2 is just beautiful anyway. But oh well, so uh, all right, queen to b3. Now the, now the computer announces mate in five here. Who do you think is going to win, black or white? You never know. You never know in these games, right? You never know. All right, let's take a poll. We're not going to actually say the number. We'll just give the, uh, <laughs> give the percentages. All right. And remember, it is black to move. Who votes that black is going to win here? Please raise your hands if you think black is going to win. All right. And so so I, I assume the other people say white is going to win? No, so your vote for black? No, no, no. Oh, okay. So we have, what's your vote? Ben's? Black. All right. So we have two vote. well, we have a, a majority, an undefeated vote for uh, black and one, oh man, this is too close to call. <laughs> all right, so, so, all right, so here we go. All right, so, so black, so we have a maiden five here for, for black. What do you think's gonna start it? Maybe, maybe Grandmaster Ben Feingold's coming in, maybe he. All right, promote the pawn, double check, queen. Okay, I love it. All right, so the, we only have one legal move here. King takes here. Okay? All right, so we got four moves to checkmate them here. How about rook to uh, F2? Check? All right, rook to F2. I'm, I'm on board. I'm on board. All right, so the bishop is protecting. So... Obviously, if we go here, oh, is this? Mm. So many ways. take bishop. So bishop's in check. Let's take this knight, maybe. Because look at this. Queen. Queen mate. There you go. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I, can see, I can see simple mates. All right. So, okay. So he plays king to e1. Okay. So do we have any ideas how to checkmate? Yeah, we don't want to go to h8. We want, that, then we really would... Uh, then we really would fall for his checkmate here. <laughs> I don't really see a checkmate for white, though. Okay, so rook to h1 check. Knight, rook. Now we got to be really careful here. How do we take his knight? With the rook on the, the g rook or the f rook? Or does it even matter? <laughs> does it? G is better because it's checkmate. And that's the name of the game. Thank you for another uh, successful year of uh, beginner breakdown. Yeah, I gave you guys the meaning of life. I mean, what else do you want? The original box, the really good box. And uh, all right, uh, see ya in 2016. Thank you.